Big Daddy here with another video in the series of customizing KDE, Plasma 5. So in this series, we have been showcasing the beauty and the power of KDE. And I think we're almost wrapped up. So let's get right to it. So in the last video, we finished display and monitor, and we're going to move on to multimedia. So audio volume is the first thing you come to. And under the Applications tab, you would have any running audio from an, any application. So any music player, video player that you have running that's playing something, you'll see it listed here once it starts up. You're able to change the volume and you're able to mute. That's pretty much what you can do in here. Recording tab is the same. I have OBS running to record this, so I can change the volume and I can mute it although I'm not going to do it right now. All right, so output devices. You would have any enabled output device that's here. Now, I have five input output devices on this computer, and but I only have one output device enabled right at the moment. Input devices. So this is the one input device that I use, although I do have other mics. Um, and you can raise and lower the volume and mute it. Same as you can do in any other ones. So here are the five input output devices that I have. So the HDA NVIDIA is monitor speakers that I don't use, so I have them off. These are the Logitech 5.1 speakers that I have, but I have them off for the video purposes because like I said, I've tried to do this video a couple times and like clicked on these while doing the video and it messed up the sound, so. Hopefully after the 14th try, no, um, I can, <laughs> I can do it without messing it up. All right. So this is the webcam mic and I have that off because I'm using the Yeti, which is enabled. And this is the HyperX 7.1 headset that I have. Now I have it on analog stereo output, which basically is just going to do the speakers. If you wanted to use both the mic and the headphones, you would click this and check analog stereo output plus digital stereo input, and that would enable it. All right, so adding a virtual output device, I have never done, so I don't know exactly what that does. Uh, and then you have automatically switch all running streams when a new output is discovered, but I don't want it to do that because I want to tell it what output to use. I don't want it to just automatically pick one. All right, so under audio and video, you have device preference. So I had the 5.1 speakers disabled right now off, but when I have normal, normal operation, I have them enabled and they would be lit up here as well. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to change the preference for specific ap application for not applications, but a, for a specific application. So for example, I have all of my sound for the computer, notifications, everything running out of the headset because 99% of the time when I'm at the computer, I'll have my headset on. So if you'll take notice, I have the HyperX as the default first one for all of them, except for music. So when I play music or when I'm up and around, I'll play music on the computer, but I want them to come out the speakers. So I have the speakers as the default. And what you do is you click on this and you can either hit prefer or defer, which basically moves it up or down. And you can test it from here. So now this doesn't work perfectly because it doesn't pick up on every music player. So for example, like Lollipop works, but yet the MPV player does not pick it up right. It will actually play it out of the speakers, even though I'm playing a video in the MPV player. Maybe because, I don't know, maybe it's designed for audio. I don't know. I thought it was designed for both, but either way, it's not picking it up. And the other uh, downside is like if you're playing something out of the browser, like YouTube or something like that, it will play it out of the, um, the speakers, even though it's a video. So it doesn't work flawlessly, but it does work. And uh, that's the way I have it set up. So off to audio hardware setup, where basically you click this, it drops down a menu of all your outputs that you have, and you can test their speaker position, test their speakers themselves from here. It'll pop up in here 
uh, like my 5.1 speakers, they'll have five speakers here I can test and make sure they're in the right spot. All right, and the back end is phone on, so not much there. So, I mean, I guess you can pick uh, VLC or GStreamer, but I just leave it on default. All right, power management. Now, this is where you can set the screen to go off in a certain amount of time. I have my screen to switch off after 10 minutes, but I have it suspending after 60 because if I'm working and I'm doing something, I run downstairs for a cup of coffee, I may be gone more than 10 minutes, but I'm not gone for an hour. So if I come back up in, say, 15 minutes, um, my monitor will be off, but it won't be in suspense. I'll still have everything doing what it's supposed to do. But I figure after 60 minutes, if I'm not back by then, you know, it should go into suspend. Unless I'm copying files or doing something that I need to let it run, then I might uncheck this. All right, so button events handling, which is your power button on your tower. And when you hit it, it's set to prompt the logout. Now, at one time I did have it on suspend. You can have it on any of these. Um, and... I did have it set to suspend, so you hit the button and it automatically suspends the computer. But for right now, I have it on the prompt. You can run the script, which I don't have any scripts to run, or you can change the wireless power saving. All right, so activities, you can use separate power management for different activities, but I don't use activities at all, so there you go. Battery levels. Now, um... Basically, the only thing you can do in here is configure the notifications. And you can do that through the notifications part of the system settings. So, And you can tell it how low the level should be before it actually pops up a message to you. So at 10%, it'll pop up a message or do whatever you have set in here. Uh, or you can change that to 15 or 5 or however way you want to do it. All right, so the digital camera, configure camera, I've never actually used this. I've had digital cameras before and I've hooked them up to the computer but it usually your file manager opens and it connects automatically and I've never had a reason to come in here and actually use this so I don't know exactly what all goes on in here if you have had success with this program uh, you can put it in the comments and uh, we'll all see it but uh, usually it works by just hooking it up and using Dolphin all right, so the next thing is probably one of my favorite applications that KDE has come out with in a while, and that is KDE Connect. Hands down the best uh, phone program to connect your phone to the computer. Way better than Bluetooth. So what you do is, this is already installed, so you download the Android app for KDE Connect, and I believe it does work with iOS, but I'm not sure on that, so don't quote me on that. But you download it, you click this button, which would normally say pair, and it sends a message to your phone, you hit pair, and voila, you have access to all these settings. All right, so you have the battery monitor, which you can see on your computer, the battery of your phone. You have the clipboard. So the clipboard, anything you copy on your computer, any web address, anything, text, it's going to send it to your phone and be on the clipboard on the phone and vice versa. It's going to be from your phone to your computer. So it works both ways. You can execute remote commands, which I don't use. You can inhibit the screensaver, which I don't use. Um, but you can control the media player on your computer, ones that are that work actually work with it. But um, like I, if you play Spotify, you can play the next song. You can pause it through your phone if that's what you want to do. I don't use that because usually I'm right near the computer anyway, so I just click the next song if that's what I want to do. You, it'll pause the media during calls. You can ping the phone. Um, obviously you receive notifications or you wouldn't see anything. You have the remote file browser, browser and if you come into Dolphin, You'll see your phone, the phone listed, and of course I have an error right now, and I'm not exactly sure why I have an error because I've never had an error with this, but it's a Big Daddy video, and it wouldn't be a Big Daddy video without an error while I'm making it. So, But you could see your SD card or your internal storage and transfer copy files just like you would without having it hooked up 
to the USB cable. This is all through the KDE Connect program. So there's no wires. All right, so um, you can ring the phone. If you put your phone down, you don't remember where you put it, you can actually ring it if you still have battery left. Um, you can do run commands, which I don't use, share and receive. All right, so you get a message on your computer when you get a text or a incoming phone call. But as of right now, you can't answer that text from the computer itself. But as you can see, coming soon, I can't wait. And then you have virtual input. So that is probably, like I said, one of my favorite applications on KDE right now. All right, so printers, printers usually get installed when they're hooked up. Like when you install the operating system and you have a printer hooked up through the USB, it usually picks it up automatically and installs it in here. But if for some reason it doesn't, you can click here to add the new printer. System preferences, you, ha you can share the printer, you can allow remote administration, and you can allow other users to cancel the job. And that's pretty much all the settings you have until you actually put up a printer or hook up a printer, then you would obviously have settings to specific to that printer. All right, so removable drives. You have three options in here, and basically it covers everything you need. Anytime you hook up a camera, media player, hard drive, external drive, it's going to open Dolphin. It's going to pop up a, a message, and it's going to open Dolphin, and they're all going to be listed here. Now, these are not all drives. These are partition drives, so they're all different separate partitions, but you see them all listed. All right, so removable devices. Uh, you used to have to edit the FSTAB file, and that can be dangerous for newer users because I have had it happen in the past where I've edited it, and it must not have been exactly right um, because the computer was unbootable then. And I actually had to go into the terminal through the login screen and uh, edit it again and take it out. But this is the easy way to enable drives mounting. All right, so you can basically, you have auto mount on login and you have auto mount on attach. So if you have an internal drive, you can do auto mount on login and that'll take care of it. If you have an external drive um, and you're only going to hook it up and it's not going to be always attached to it, you would do auto mount on attach. That way when you connected it, it would auto mount it. But usually, usually they do it automatically, even without this enabled. But um, this is where you would enable any drive to auto mount. And I believe that wraps up all the settings in KDE. Now just remember, like I said, Anytime you mess up, you come in here, you hit defaults, and it'll be back to normal. So I have really enjoyed making this series and have learned a lot from everybody commenting. And we're, we all learn a little bit every day. And I think it was awesome. So this is not the end of the videos, obviously. I mean, I'm going to be making more videos. I don't know exactly which direction I'm going to go in. I might do a... Um, a series on KDE native applications like the KDE Connect or Kmail or stuff like that. But I'm not sure exactly which way we're going to go, but I will definitely see you in the next video. But until then, Big Daddy out.